so yeah so a bit more detail about reverse engineering and then maybe some examples i think that's great because that will re- that obviously brings it to life straight away Okay, so just to just to to reiterate, reverse engineering is just finding examples of the best in the field and working backwards to figure out how they did it. So in Silicon Valley, this idea of reverse engineering is very well known. People like Steve Gates and, and uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs have been. This is how they established their organizations: is that there is a, is a tremendously long history of coders identifying winning products and then working backwards to, to identify how they were created. So this is how we got the laptop and the mouse and uh, even the iPhone. Uh, it's all about reverse engineering. What's less well known is that reverse engineering also explains how people like Malcolm Gladwell and Stephen King learned to write, how Claude Monet became a groundbreaking artist, and even how Judd Apatow became the, the, one of the most successful comedy minds of our generation. And studying the best in the field turns out to, to be a lot more common than anyone realized. And um, you know, there's a range of strategies for how to apply this. Uh, it really depends on your particular field. Uh, I'll give you some examples. So you're, you're a nonfiction writer. You probably know this. Nonfiction writers will often uh, flip right to the back of the book to look at the end note section to figure out what are the sources that went into creating this. Um, yeah. There, there's examples of chefs ordering, uh, and they talk about this in the Code of Greatness, where chefs will order food to go and place a complex sauce on a white plate and spread it out to identify the ingredients. And sometimes there's a magnifying glass involved. Um, photographers will look at images in a very particular way. Most people who are, who are you know, photography novices like, like me will look at the object when they look at a photo. But a photographer, a trained photographer, will look at lots of other things like the shadows, which tell you where the light source was placed, yeah. the reflection in the subject's eyes, which can tell you the, the, the location of, of, the, of the light source. And so the critical thing really is not to passively enjoy experiences, but to consistently think, how was this created? What can I learn from this? And how can I apply this to a project that I'm working on? It's like breaking down the constituent elements, the art, the, uh, the example you gave there in the photograph, you know, the light, the shadow and everything else. And it's thinking about how someone that's best in class or a leader in their field has actually done that and put those pieces together into that jigsaw and learning learning from that rather than as you said trying to master something for 10,000 hours which exactly sounds right. an inordinate exactly. amount of time yes exactly right and you know i would just given you a range of examples of all these diverse fields but you know just to make this concrete for the for the digital hr leader you know this this applies to to how a well written memo is constructed it applies to how a deck is constructed it applies to how you write a ted talk all of these things are examples that i talk about in my book deconstructing what are the constituent parts and then how do you uh, apply those to whatever it is you're working on and we're going to i'm sure touch on is this copying because i'm happy to, to to have that debate um but i i I just think that it's so long overdue for people to realize that this is how those at the top are figuring things out. They're not waiting to be taught by an instructor. They're not taking courses. They're not going to conferences necessarily, probably doing all those things as well, but they're actively learning every step of the way. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.